Welcome to Valente Brothers TV. We're back here at Valente Brothers headquarters in North Miami Beach today to talk about the curriculums, the history of the curriculums in our style of Jiu Jitsu. Pedro, share with us, with our friends, a bit of the history behind our curriculums. Well, for us, what was always fascinating about Jiu Jitsu was its complete nature. I remember watching an interview with Grandmaster Helio where he was asked, what's the difference between Jiu Jitsu and the other martial arts? He says, well, the other martial arts represent slices of the cake. Jiu Jitsu is the whole cake. And so when I started teaching Jiu Jitsu back in 1993 at the University of Miami, I always wanted to give my students this complete approach. But initially we didn't. Students who trained in the group class basically learned grappling only. They did not learn the striking techniques, they did not learn the stand-up self-defense techniques against surprise attacks, and limited throws, but mostly grappling. And when Grandmaster Helio started visiting our school in 1997, he came every year from between 1997 and 2007, he came 12 times. So sometimes he would come more than once a year. And during those years, the initial years, he also expressed to us this desire for our students to learn the complete system. The problem was that the only way until that point to learn these other elements of Jiu-Jitsu was by taking private classes. And so we felt a responsibility to develop a curriculum for our students to be able to learn the complete system in a group class. And also it wasn't really what we did, right? We felt that the group class system that we learned also through our training in Brazil did not represent fully the experience that we received and I think that was a very big motivation. Yes, because we grew up taking private classes and so we learned through those private classes complete Jiu Jitsu, comprehensive Jiu Jitsu, all the five elements of Jiu Jitsu and we didn't want that um, complete approach to be exclusive to the private students. And maybe because of our father's relationship with Jiu-Jitsu, and that relationship started pre-sport Jiu-Jitsu, we even say sometimes pre-old school Jiu-Jitsu, never being a sport Jiu-Jitsu connection, his objective and our grandfather's objective was never um, to become, for them to become sport Jiu-Jitsu champions. It was always the lifestyle, it was always the philosophy, and primarily the self-defense, the fighting component of Jiu-Jitsu. I think that as well, that we no inherited that from them, and that really helped us shape our teaching methodology. And our father, with the, the, the authorization of Grandmaster Helio, he exposed us as children to the most high-level boxing coach in Brazil who trains with Olympians, um, with the most high-level judo teachers in Brazil who also train with Olympians, amazing knowledge that we received from those teachers to be able to understand Jiu-Jitsu as a whole, the striking techniques, the throwing techniques, all of this with the approval of Grandmaster Edo, who through his private classes also worked with us in those elements. And it wasn't that we were training the sport of boxing or the sport of judo, because under the supervision and the guidance of our father, he made sure that the striking techniques and the throwing techniques that we were learning were within the strategy and the philosophical principles of jiu-jitsu so that today we can have we could have this complete approach and this is something that we never really revealed uh, publicly before and the interesting thing about these um, experiences is that sometimes even grandmaster edu himself would come watch yes our training sessions uh, many of them happened in a famous soccer club um, in Rio de, Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro and it was really a great opportunity and as you said we had the opportunity sometimes to go to these training sessions um, specifically you being older with Hoyler himself yes. you would attend the yes. judo training sessions yes. and you guys had the opportunity to, to practice with the Olympians in Brazil yes. being one of the most powerful judo Sergio uh, Sano, who was a 1984 Olympian we yeah. worked extensively, both of us worked yeah. extensively with him, Ney Wilson and, uh, and boxing uh, Hafi Giglio. And this had to happen because it was really the, the time, and obviously later this became evidenced 
even more. But it was really a time where jujitsu schools, primarily in their group class setting, did not really offer the striking element, did not really offer the throwing element, right? Until today, a lot of jujitsu schools, they choose to start their grappling classes on their knees. And there's pretty much virtually no striking whatsoever. So that was done. We were very fortunate in that sense. We had Grandmaster Ed, who was really the head coach. My dad working directly underneath his supervision. And again, we were not professionals. We were actually young kids at the time, teenagers. And the objective was not for us to be competitors. That's never something our father really wanted us to do, or professional fighters. It was just to learn jujitsu as a complete fighting system. And the specialization with Grandmaster Elio in the stand-up self-defense against surprise attacks, including the weapon defenses, the knife, the gun, the stick, all the complete self-defense Something we program. did regularly, at least two, three times a week with Grandmaster uh, Elio Gracie and a lot of it also with his sons. Um, Master Hoyler and with his sons. And But let's go back to our curriculum. So what year did that happen? I think it was 1999. It was right when you moved um, to Miami. Because at one time, talking to Grandmaster Elio and asking how can we teach the group class students this um, system, the complete system. He said, well, when I was young, at the original Academia Grecia, I had a method where in a class of 20 students, I would work with one at a time and the other ones would watch and they would learn by watching. And, but he said, that's very difficult for the teacher because you have to get thrown many times and you have to work with each student and go through the whole program with each student every class. And I accepted the challenge. I said, oh, I want to try it. And I did, and it worked. But at the time you felt and our father felt that maybe it was a little bit boring for the student because the student would train for five minutes and watch for 55. I mean, one hour class. Monotonous. Was... Yes. And not enough work, yeah. right? And so I remember that both you and, and our dad said, let's come up with a, with a curriculum for the, it's possible, right? If you think of a way, because the problem was that in a private class, lesson one, lesson two, you can, when you teach somebody lesson nine, you can review one through eight because you know exactly where the student is at in the curriculum. But in a group class where people come at different times and start at different times, that um, presented a, a big problem, a challenge to be able to organize a way for students to work. But then what we felt, and I remember that specifically, is that the techniques taught in Grandmaster Elio's original curriculum that we preserve 100%, they are all very simple. That's something that probably most of you have heard in the past. That's something that comes from Grandmaster Elio. His objective was really when he organized his teaching methodology, his teaching system, um, he really made a point to make it simple, to make it so that anyone could learn. That's really the truth and maybe his system is really the one that keeps that alive. Because yeah. a lot of times we, we hear that, you know, jujitsu is for everyone, but sometimes, honestly, even for myself, I see some unbelievable athletes performing some amazing techniques that are very difficult for the average person to perform. But jujitsu under Grandmaster Elio's guidance and tutelage was always simple, simplicity, designed for street situations, the most common street situations. So I think that's what really allowed us to say, you know what, even if a student joins on lesson 10, on lesson 12, he will catch up. And that also, I think that's a big change. That was a big game changer for Valencia Brothers is that through this system, this helpful vibe, this helpful spirit really flourished in our school because we really turned all of the students, especially if a student was just a few stripes more advanced than the other, and of course, a lot of times you have a purple, brown, even black belt attending these classes, they had to help each other. Yeah. They had to really become almost private teachers. We created a culture in the school that that was not a beginner's class. That's, I think, one of the first times that the class was not called beginners. It was called fundamentals. fundamentals. And we created a culture where the advanced students would attend that class because we explained to them that in that class you had the most important techniques in Jiu-Jitsu. 
And so that created a very good uh, scenario for the white belts, the beginners, because they would pair up with the higher belts and, and that. And a great opportunity for the advanced students who, as we know, one of the best ways for you to really develop technically is to have the opportunity to share what you know, because then it really makes you be on top of your game so that you can really explain and know what you're talking about. And, but this really, and this is something that I felt tremendously uh, because as you said, it was when I was coming to America for um, obviously to study, but to train Jujutsu and to be with you. But I really saw a big change, a slow and gradual oh, yeah. change. Huge, and, and the, first, the first 15 minutes of the class also yeah. were also very, very important because that's how we address the challenge of the review. Because in a class you have to, for the self-defense techniques, because we must say that some instructors taught self-defense techniques in group classes. We were not the first to of do course. that. But if the, self, if the stand-up self-defense techniques are not taught in a systematic approach where you review the moves every time, muscle memory is not developed, reflexes are not developed, and then it's really not It just becomes very a, a warm-up. Yes. Like sometimes most people use the self-defense as a warm-up. So we had to create a way for these techniques to be reviewed and through a combination of this, this spirit of helpfulness, this culture of helpfulness in the class and a portion of the class for the students to be able to review in an, in an organized way the first 15 minutes of the class. With that, we were able to solve this puzzle. But initially we didn't know if it was going to work or not. It was a test, it was an experience. And I remember the first time Grandmaster Radio came because obviously we seeked his authorization before we implemented this new We used program. his cards, his original cards, so that students could track uh, their progress and know which class they had completed, what classes they still had to complete out of the 27 lessons. And I remember the first time he came to Miami, he was skeptical and he said, is this the new class that you are teaching, this new curriculum? Okay. And so he walked into the mat during the first 15 minutes and he just walked straight to a few of the students and he would ask, he would have somebody translate and he would ask, have you ever taken a private lesson before? The student would say no. Have you ever trained any jujitsu before? No. And then he would start attacking the student with the basic moves. And he did that to two or three students or four students and he was impressed. Yeah, I remember. He was like, wow, yeah. you guys just created something special yeah. here because this is the first time that you will be able to teach the stand-up self-defense techniques, the complete jiu-jitsu system to a group class in a systematic, systematic way for reflexes to be developed, for muscle memory to be developed. And that was the beginning of this curriculum, 90, end of 99, 2000, so we've been doing it for 16 years now. Yeah. And the program has evolved and developed throughout all these years. And one thing that really honored us tremendously was that Grandmaster Elio liked this program so much that he started um, recommending it to all the students, to all the schools under him, even his sons, yeah. that they would look at what we were doing. And I think that now looking back, we can see that this um, fundamentals, this 27 lesson curriculum that we created here in Miami, that we pioneered here in Miami, had a, a, a tremendous impact. impact. And we're very grateful for all the support, not, all, not only from our students, obviously, but from our teachers. Yes. Um, Hoyler, who often comes here to teach seminars, he's always uh, very, very happy with the success and the organization. Yes. Um, Master Hickson, who's been here a few times, also expressed many times. Hoyce, who brings all his students from all over the world, not only to test brown belts, to partake in our black belt exam, the famous black belt test in the back room, but also all of Hoyce's students, they are always very welcome to come and to spend weeks yes. um, taking advantage of now the professor's specialization course, actually now the BJJ community even, who feels the necessity to add self-defense back to their training regiments. But also um, Horium, I remember yes. when Grandmaster Elio asked Horium to even come to Miami and Hardy called us and said, guys, can you film a class and, yes. and we send it to us? We put a tripod right here because Grandmaster Hardy gave us a call and said, my dad is talking a lot about this new program that you guys have. I want to see how it works. Can you put a camera? And, and so we filmed the whole class. We sent it to them. And eventually Hiron came. Yes. And actually this was a process that took many years. Yes. I think really the change happened in 2006 yes. when we went to California on a yes. trip to California. Yeah, right? and, and I remember telling, um, Grandmaster Horio and Hiro and Henner, 
we had lunch in my master Hollywood's house in California. And I referred to the Gracie in action tapes where Hollywood himself narrating the, the, the videos, he said martial arts became martial sports and they became diluted. And at the time, there was a whole movement about putting Jiu Jitsu in the Olympics. And my idea was, guys, let's not think about sport and Olympics. Let's think about giving students the complete approach, which is so life-changing. Let's give students the self-defense approach. That's what represents the roots of Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, and we also believe that even within sport Jiu Jitsu, if people were interested in learning sport Jiu Jitsu, you already have a tremendous amount of schools all over the world teaching that. And there's nothing wrong with that. We don't condemn that in any way. But we felt that there were not enough places teaching Jiu Jitsu as an art of self-defense, a complete approach to fighting to give people confidence that in a real street fight they can defend themselves. And that's our objective here. And that's why we created this um, curriculum for teaching the complete program and that's why we're so honored of the impact that this curriculum that we developed back in the year 2000 had in Jiu Jitsu as a whole. Good. That's um, a very, very important topic and we hope you guys enjoyed and uh, we'll see you guys soon. We'll try to be a little bit more active this year with Valente Brothers TV. Uh, thank you very much.